Tuba and throat singing is not so mysterious when you consider the fact that when we speak or sing, certain frequencies and harmonics are enhanced due to the resonances in our vocal systems. These are called formant regions. Have your students try this. Cover the ears and sing A, E, I, O, U. Those different timbres that are heard are due to different frequencies, harmonics being emphasized above the fundamental frequency. Now the tuba singer has spent months and years mastering the technique to bring out certain harmonics through the singing. Before we listen to tuba singing, let's look at the spectrogram of my vowels. Even though I am not a singer, notice the nice harmonics and regions of emphasis. Harmonic 4 is strong for the A vowel, 3 for E, 8 for I, 3 and 4 for O, and finally 2 and 3 for U. I do not consciously select which harmonic is stronger. You will shortly hear the tuba singing visualized in this spectrogram. David Wilkin controls which harmonic to emphasize. For the demonstration, he produces harmonics 8, 7, 6, then 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. Note that harmonic 3 is also pronounced during the first half of the spectrogram and harmonic 2 towards the end. Here is David Wilkin. <laughs> Which harmonics do tuba singers use? This figure places harmonics on their respective positions on the keyboard starting with C3, which is not far from the fundamental used by David Wilkin. Some match better than others with harmonics 7 and 11 in red being quite off. Harmonics 8, 9, 10, 12, as well as the octave below 12, namely harmonics 6, form a pentatonic scale. Pentatonic scales appear throughout the world in different cultures and are very common in Asian music. David Wilkin will conclude our presentation with a Tuvan folk song using these pentatonic harmonics. I'll sing a uh, traditional Tuvan folk song called Arti Sair, which means on the other side of the dry riverbed. Uh, 